One North Eden, finally there's a new launch coming up in Bona Vista and One North region. So is this new launch going to ride Bona Vista's second wave? Once, on level 2, you actually have height advantage. Based on your current uh, property portfolio, what is the level of risk? So this project name is called One North Eden. Now the location and the road address is pretty interesting because this is called Slim Barracks Rise. This is a District 5 development and of course uh, the developer who have successfully bidded the land is uh, TID Investment which is a joint venture between Mitsu Fudosan and Hong Leong Holdings. In terms of the architect, it's yet to be announced. Site area is 5,779 square meters. Tenor will be 99, leasehold estimated TOP will be 2025. The number of units right here is split between two towers, uh, 13 and 15 storey, 165 units in total. So not a very large size development. It will be considered a medium, low density kind of project. Interesting thing is that it is within 500 meters from both MRT station, 450 meters from Bona Vista, and within 500 meters, if you walk downwards towards one north, MRT station. All of us know that Bona Vista is actually an intersection MRT interchange between the Circle Line and the East-West Line. One North station will be serving primarily the entire One North region and that is the Circle Line. Now if you look at the MRT map, this is also a very interesting zoning because uh, after Kent Ridge Station, that will be One North and after One North, it will be Bona Vista followed by Holland V. So we're actually looking at an area which is located within a very prime zoning, although it's considered an RCR zone, uh, which is called the rest of central region. City Fringe is another term that we refer to RCR. We are right beside District 10, right beside Holland Village and of course, uh, on the south side, that will be the entire NUS, NUH area. You also have Singapore Poly on your left hand side. And of course, needless to say, that is very close to the Science Park area as well. So we're looking at a very concentrated area with campuses, high-tech uh, companies, and a lot of international MNCs have placed their offices within this zoning. That is of course in addition to Maple City Business Park plus Tanjong Paga uh, as a central CBD zone. So since 2007, there hasn't been a new launch that has been launched in the Bona Vista one North area despite its status as a regional business district also known as Regional CBD. This is a seriously huge area measuring about 2 kilometers from one end to the other. So about a distance between Tanjung Paga and City Hall. This is also the only such hub in Singapore with several specialty tech clusters such as Biopolis, Fusion Polis and Media Polis. So in fact, Bona Vista and its clusters now form the second largest high-skilled employment node in Singapore after the CBD. Plus, Singapore's success in fighting COVID-19 will only continue to attract big corporate names to Bona Vista, comprising both locals and expats. And of course, that will mean that this is a great additional pivot to your rentability if you invest in some of the condominiums right here within the One North cluster. Now, the area also has an upcoming large-scale mixed-use development called Rochester Commons by Capital Land. That will add about 19,000 square meters of Grade A office space plus an upscale 135-room hotel as well as retail and dining amenities when completed this year in 2021. Now, the development will also house Catapult, Southeast Asia's first shared executive learning center, which uh, you can see from the map itself. A pretty interesting concept where vast public spaces of this campus style project will increase the livability of the area. Of course, we think that that will add on to a lot of demand for the condominium residential properties right here. And now in 2019, something's very interesting is that URA finally recognized the need for more housing in One North. Thus, they have put out a land parcel for tender that is in a very prime spot in Bona Vista, situated near the Rochester Commons and of course in a sweet spot between Bona Vista and One North almost right in the middle. After one and a half years, uh, One North Eden uh, is launched right now ahead of its April uh, launch date. So 165 units, 99 years condo. Let's take a look at what will be the indicative price and the unit mix in One North Eden.
So what we have observed in the year 2020 and 2021 is that the launches that has been happening in the past two years is that developers are definitely looking at what kind of properties are widely popular in the market with this new price trend. Uh, we all know that the price trend right now for most city fringe areas when it comes to new launches are already aging towards the $2,000 PSF upwards as well. So when developers launch any project, it's very important to note that they are going for the quantum play as well as looking at what will be the right distribution mix so that they don't have too many units that are unsold uh, over a prolonged period of time. Now, when we look at launches, most of the time, there'll be a range between one to four or five betas. Similarly, for one of Eden, there's a spread starting from one bait plus study kind of layout all the way to the four beta premium layout. Of course, there are only 165 units. There's not much that they can spread. What we can see right here is that the two betas close to about 40 odd percent uh, comprising of its two bait plus two plus study kind of model. The smallest type, which is the one plus study, that will occupy about 24 units. There are two types of three bedroom model, three bit compact, 13 units, three bit premium, 26 units. And that leaves us with the four bit compact, which is eight units plus four bit premium, 24. So if we were to spread out by percent, two betas, 40 over percent, the rest are more or less quite evenly spread. In contrast, of course, we can have a look at some of the other plots. One Holland Village, uh, residences, we can take a look at Normanham Park, Ken Ridge Hill residences. This were all done pre-2018 in the 2017-2018 era with respective PSF PPR prices at 1888-969 and 1096. So for pricing, at first glance, the first and most obvious reason that we think this pricing might come off as attractive to a lot of buyers is that majority of the units will likely be priced below a $2,000 per square foot price point. There are of course a few other eye-catching things that are happening right here is that the sub 1 million prices for the one bedroom units are pretty attractive. We also noticed that the starting price of the 689 square feet two bedroom units right here, they will likely start at about $1.275 million indicative, which is only about $15,000 higher than the list price of a floor unit uh, in Park Clementis, which is in the OCR region. And that's about 3.5 kilometers towards the west side in Clementi. We have also looked at the pricing for Wule residences in 2020. Although Wule is not part of a regional CBD, the prices for the three bidders there is higher than the estimated median of the three bidders right here in one of Eden. Something worth mentioning is the fact that the RCR price index has increased by about 14% from quarter 1 2018 to quarter 4 2020. And for units at one of Eden to come in at well below the $2,000 per square foot, we think that there is some value in there. So let's have a look right now at the comparative analysis of uh, new launch condos around the one of Eden area. One Holland V and Park Suisse, these are located in District 10, which is the CCR zone. And then One North, Normanton, Kenridge, these are all in District 5. These are all 99 years, except Park Suite, uh, that is 110 years. Amount of units wise, Normanton Park would definitely be the big brother because it's 1,800 plus units with a host of fantastic facilities. We have done that comparison review series under Mark. One North, one beta is likely to be sub one mil, probably starting from about 990,000. Normanton Park, you can still get a one beta for about 920 odd thousand dollars. Kenridge one bedroom has been fully sold. To get something that is one bedroom in Park Suites and one Holland V, you have to pay above $1.2 million and $1.4 million onwards. Something that will be interesting in One North Eden is the quantum price of the two beta because that is starting at about $1.2 million for a two bed two bath. And as mentioned at the start of this video, I think the two bed two bath is really something that is worth looking at because it's not like in most new launches in this recent years. If we look at Normanton Park, starting price will be about $1.13 plus. We do recognize that Normanton Park definitely is a quantum play that is very suitable for families that are upgrading from HDB apartments. The quantum range there across different categories has a whole lot of uh, other options. The three bathers in one north 
Also priced at quite a nice quantum, 1.7 odd million dollars. Normanum Park, that will start about 1.5 plus. Kent Ridge will start about 1.6 plus. Four bidder wise, One North is starting at about 2.2 odd million. If you look at Normanum Park, that is about 2 mil onwards. Kent Ridge about 2.6 mil onwards. So in terms of different categories, one, two, three, four bidders in One North, starting prices looks pretty attractive in terms of quantum as well for something that is about 1,009 plus per square foot. Comparing Normandon Park and One of Eden, One of Eden is about 5 to 12% more expensive in terms of prices. Normandon Park will be a quantum play for something that is about 1.3 uh, kilometers from an MRT station and is really about whether do you want to live in a One North Silicon Valley region or you prefer something that is a larger facility zone for your kids to enjoy because the amount of facilities right there and Normandon Park is really fantastic. And the floor plan is pretty cleverly done at one of Eden is because if we were to put in this three floor plan side by side and look at one plus study layout, 517 square feet having an extra study room packed right into the floor plan itself. And then I put it straight beside Normandon Park's one bedroom layout, 527 square feet. Normandon Park one plus study, 570 square feet. You'll notice that in terms of the floor plan planning wise is pretty efficient. Is it more worth it to get a one plus study at Normandon Park compared to a one plus study at one of Eden? If you can get between these two quantum, then naturally one of Eden will be the better option for a one plus study option. Now looking at Can Reach Hill residence, the base list prices for its remaining units are mostly higher than the corresponding indicative starting price prices at one of Eden. We've also done a review on Clavon. That will still be within the District 5 region, but it will then lie in the OCR belt. So this 299's leasehold projects, they have transacted at a median PSF price of around 1006 plus to about $1,643 per square foot respectively in the past year. About 15% lower than one of Eden's expected median PSF price, which is going to be about $1,009 plus per square foot. New launch in D21 right now will be Mayfair Modern. In the past year, have been doing at about $1,932 medium PSF price. View at Kismis is also one other option which has been doing at $1,706 per square foot averagely. Of course, no surprise, View at Kismis is already about 90% sold. Mayfair Modern, which is about 70% of its units being sold. There will be two more condos with similar plot sizes coming up along the same street. These two land parcels have been put on the confirmed list by URA for tender this year. After the tender, the projects are estimated to launch sometime in the late 2022 or even 2023 because the RCR price index now is at a higher level than 2019. It's also likely that the winning bids for these two condo sites will come in at a higher PSF per plot ratio price than what PID paid for one of Eden site. One of Eden is going to likely start about 980 over thousand to one odd million dollars for its one bed plus study model. One of residences, which is the project beside one of Eden, one bed is right there. You can get something at about 800 odd thousand dollars. Number of projects in one of residences is 405. Also a very beautiful project. Rochester residences, if you are going for one bedroom, start for 1.23 million dollars. There are no one bedroom available at Heritage View and Dover Park View. The two bedders there is approximately about. 1.17 mil onwards for Heritage View. The World Park View is about one odd million dollars for its two beta. Coming back to one of Eden, two beds will likely launch at 1.2 odd million. One of residences to get a two bedroom, they are going at about 1.47 mil onward. Rochester residences, two bedroom will cost you at about 1.8 odd million dollars. If we move to a three beta, one of Eden will likely start from 1.7. One of residences right now is doing it at 1.9 odd onward. Rochester residence will start from 2.3 mil onwards. Heritage View and Dover Park View which are about 1.3 plus, 1.5 plus million. And of course for four beders, one of Eden will start from 2.2 odd mil. One of residence starting from 3 mil. Heritage View about 2.8 mil. We have indicated the distance to the MRT station. All these are pretty walkable. This is a table that I think will be very useful for you to gauge whether should you go for a resale property in this one of belt or should you go for the one of Eden? We're just pretty amazed that the developer can squeeze in a very proper size study room into a 517 square feet. The living room size is not compromised, although there is a small tweak to the dining area being part of the open kitchen concept. There are only 24 units, so I think you have to really put in your 
e-ballot slip pretty quickly. Judging by the fact that there is no two bed, one bath concept here, the smallest two bedder will be a six, eight, nine square feet. This dumbbell layout is a little bit different because although it's a dumbbell layout, but the kitchen still sort of feels like pretty enclosed kitchen. You also have two plus study. The study room is very sizable, I would say. In fact, you can even design a customized, slightly shorter kind of queen bed to really fit into the entire study room if you want it to be your third room. There are also very interesting optional choices for the buyers because you can opt in. There's a divider wall in between the living and study room. You can opt in to tear down that. Other than that, I think uh, with uh, COVID and with the work at home kind of status, you do want some flexibility for the extra space to have a home office at home. So I think the study room is going to be fantastic. 700 plus square feet for the two plus study also very efficient layout. This 3 bit compact will be pretty much like the rest of the new launches that you will see. You do get an enclosed kitchen, but there's no home shelter as your storage room. There's no study room, no utility room. Pretty clear cut layout for the 947 square feet. Quantum wise, starting from 1.7 odd million dollars. Pretty much as a no brainer if you're looking for a nice quantum play for a 3 bedroom kind of layout. If you do want additional dry kitchen and a wet kitchen kind of concept, then you have to go for the 3 bit premium model. It will then give you an additional utility room that has an entryway from the living room area this time round. What you do get in exchange for this 1119 square feet is that all of the additional close to maybe about 170 square feet uh, compared to the three bit compact is that you have a longer foyer walkway, you have a dry kitchen, you have a utility room, and you have an additional WC bathroom. Three bedroom premium gives you the additional utility room and the WC bathroom. But when you come to a four bit compact, that utility room has disappeared. In fact, it's being changed to a study room instead at the same utility zone. You still have a dry and wet kitchen. You have, of course, the additional fourth bedroom, which is the key difference why when you go to a four bedroom, the upgrade in size is only close to about probably 130 odd square feet because four bedroom compact is 1259 square feet. Additional four bedroom, utility room change from the three bed version in the utility fashion to a study room. So other than that, not much of a big change. And then if you come to a 4-bit premium, on top of the 4-bit compact, the only key difference then will be an additional home shelter, longer foyer walkway, and an additional walk-in wardrobe in your master. So that will then bring you to 1399 square feet. That's basically the key difference. So I think to sum it up, 3-bit compact seems uh, pretty decent for the quantum. If you go for, you really need a 4-bit room, you don't have, let's say, a living helper at home, then you might not really want to consider a 4-bit premium, just go for the 4-bit compact because the key difference is just the additional home shelter. And uh, if you don't have a living helper at home, you can just use that study room, that area to be your utility room for your storage option as well. So last but not least, we want to access the potential growth and future upside uh, in this zoning and we know a lot has happened to Bona Vista and One North region. But actually this area we think is just getting started because aside from the Rochester Commons, a look at uh, URA master plan shows that a number of underdeveloped uh, land parcels in the area are happening, including a plot right next to One North Eden, which has been zoned as uh, white sites. So a white site is a land parcel where a mix of development types is allowed, such as a shopping mall with great age office space as the government typically assigns white sites to strategic locations and also because of the unique hybrid developments that eventually come up, there's potential for greater capital appreciation for a condo located near a white site. Now an example of a white site that has been developed is Westgate and Jam at Jurong East, Connection at uh, Farrow Park and Dual Gallery and Dual Residences at Bugis. At Bona Vista, almost the entire Rochester area is a white site as well as several land parcels in the one north area that has yet to be developed. There is a sprawling area in Dover that was once a neighborhood of uh, HDB flats and that is also zoned now as a white site and it could in future allow for expansion of the entire one of business hub to be even larger. So noteworthy is that the empty field right next to Bona Vista MRT station is a earmark for future commercial development. So if that happens, if that's going to be like integrated kind of project, then this whole area will be even more exciting with more shopping F&B needs in addition to what One North Vista is already providing for this area. So moving further towards the Mediapolis site, 
where Mediacorp right now is and the new Grab headquarters is coming up. This is also a place with immense potential because there's close to a square kilometers of business park sites here that's awaiting to be taken up by companies like Grab and Razor. In fact, around one North Eden, the abundance of undeveloped greenfield land and the number of white sites and business park sites is unheard of anywhere else in the RCR region. So you are located in the location with already very healthy and buoyant land value. And of course, with the additional prospect of a steady long-term upside from future developments in the immediate walking distance vicinity. Moreover, the Buna Vista, Dover, Queenstown area will also see new housing developments that will predominantly consist of probably HDB apartments. This will then bring tens of thousands of households into the area it might drive the growth of commercial amenities at Buena Vista uh, as the population heats up over here. It might also then drive uh, HGB upgraded pools uh, in uh, 8 to 10 years time. And most importantly, we think that the demand for the future of uh, condominiums right here from HGB upgraders will definitely be very consistent once these HGB apartments are being built. We want to look at some of the potential investment in rental you. So as we have said earlier, the low quantum unit size and layout of uh, the two and three bedroom units right here at One North Eden. It is of course good uh, in terms when you are talking about renting out um, the two bedroom kind of apartments that are usually the very hot favorite kind of configuration um, by tenants demand. But maybe just to break down the rooms itself, um, an ensuite master room right here in the full condo facility within this one North Buena Vista area is going anywhere between $1,009 to $2,200. A common room in this area is actually asking for a $1,007 to $2,000 range in terms of rental if you look at uh, some of the property portal sites. The combined estimated total rent of $3,900 estimated if you were to buy something that is about $1.3 million for a two beta. Uh, that works out to be about 5.75 and estimated rent for a $1.8 million 3 bidders might likely hit the $5,500 uh, to $5,800 kind of range for overall quantum. That will then bring you to a net rental yield of between 2.8% to 3.3%. If you have a look at some of the gross rental yield that's already performing at one of residences and the Rochester residences, they are enjoying an average of about 3% to 4%, which is considered a very strong gross rental yield in Singapore. So uh, what we're calculating for one of Eden is a net rental yield, less of your property tax, less of some of the maintenance costing as a landlord. So currently there's a serious shortage of uh, condo rooms for rent as well in one of. Uh, I think it's because of the confluence of factors favorable to landlord. That will also mean that the unique preference of um, tech industry pro professionals to live as near to the workplace as possible. Plus the fact that the presence of highly priced D10 rental may be limiting the options for rentals who are well paid but also a little bit budget conscious. So something interesting to note is that singular room rentals right here are pretty hot favorite. Two bidders, one bidders here are also pretty hot favorite as well in the entire One North vicinity. Now moreover, One North is probably the best location in Singapore for property investors to leverage on uh, the global tech boom and benefit from the concentration of highly paid uh, software engineers and developers whose salaries right now might even rival professionals in the banking and finance industry judging from how things are going globally in terms of the tech boom. Now according to Glassdoor, the typical software engineer at Grab earns about $82,000 annually and that can go up to a range of $115,000 per annum. That puts condos like One North Eden in pole position to capture this tenant's uh, demand. Assuming the typical expenditure on rental, which is uh, averagely about 30% of income, those at a high end tier of the salary range uh, can afford to rent a one beta or even a two beta, while those uh, in a more common average salary range will gravitate towards maybe renting the common room or master room. That being said, if you do buy a two beta, you can not just rent out the entire two bedroom unit. You, you can of course go for the dumbbell layout, rent out one master room to one tenant, rent out the common room to another tenant, and then you have an inflow an outflow of two tenants within the same unit. Now, of course, a distinct advantage to renting out rooms is that you seldom will have a full vacancy period compared to renting out your entire two bedroom at one shot because if one tenant leaves, you still have another tenant sustaining close to 50% of the rent and then while well, you get another tenant coming in. And that gives you two different options. Rent out the whole unit, 
or rent out rooms individually. Now that we'll talk uh, about the upside factors and the rental prospects, uh, the technical observation of property prices and value of the area sums up the opportunity that uh, One North Eden presents uh, for buyers. Now when an area has few condo developments, a correspondingly low volume of low landed private transactions and a lack of new launches, prices are usually likely to underperform the overall market until there's a critical mass of buyers and sellers. This has been very much the case for Bonavista Dover One North neighborhood, which is just four condominiums at the moment. Uh, the median per square foot resale prices for the condos has risen in the past 10 years period, but trail behind the growth of the entire D5 as well as the RCR region. So that's something that is very interesting to note because uh, in terms of price growth, it seems that right now, this is just getting started right here at One North. So in 2019, we saw that the resale prices in the vicinity of One North Eden, it has dipped below resale prices of the rest of D5, uh, but that was followed by a sharp upswing in 2020. So we believe that buyers are starting to recognize that this is the zone right now to go to. So within the RCR, the most prominent example where a spike in supply of new condos pushed up the resale prices in general is Potong Base area in D13. So D13's pace of development in the past 10 years, which includes the completion of 11 condominiums near to the Potong Pasir MRT station, it has then resulted in a very steady rise in resale prices of older condos such as one Leicester, uh, based on our research. That was TOP in year 2009, while also driving up the prices of later new launches such as the Woodleigh Residences in 2018. So at a time where a lot of hype has done up uh, a lot in driving up uh, prices in certain locations, we think that places like Bona Vista and One North has flown under the radar despite the fact that RCR region continues to grow. Uh, in fact, it could be because Bona Vista has taken so much of a backseat in the minds of buyers uh, that we think One North Eden is able to launch at this quantum at PSF. If this area has been massively developed like Potong Pase and Paleba or hyped up uh, like Jurong or Greater Southern Waterfront or if the developer has bid for this site before the 2018 uh, government cooling measures then I think definitely one of them will be priced above $2,000 per square foot. We will definitely not be able to see prices that is below $2,000 per square foot. So all said and done, I think there are just too many catalysts for one of Eden's pricing to stay the same for long. So last but not least, speak to our Property Limb Brothers new launch consultants. You can contact us in the link below. Meantime, uh, take care and I will see you soon. My name is Melvin Lim, co-founder of Property Limb Brothers. And as always, we're happy to show you the place. Cheers.